Good morning, Holt Church of the Nazarene. I'm so excited to be here with you this morning as we join together um, as the church to worship the Lord. I'd like to open this morning with a call to worship from, good morning, Kim. I'd like to open with a call to worship from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalm of praise to him. For the Lord is great, a great king above all gods. He holds in his hand the depth of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. Let me open with a word of prayer this morning. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity we have to gather together in unconventional ways to worship you, Lord. Nothing, nothing, Lord, can stop us from worshiping you because our worship is our hearts bent towards you, Lord. No matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, we can always stop and worship you. And I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to come together in a building to worship you, but we can also come together, Lord, in this space, in this time, right here on Facebook, Lord, and lift up your name and worship you and join together and hear from you, Lord. And my prayer today is that people all over the world would take opportunity to hear from you, to draw close Closer to you to sense your love and your hope and your peace and your goodness Lord your joy and to be filled Lord to be filled with your light that they might be a light in this world Lord be with us now as I deliver this message um, may our hearts be postured in such a way Lord that we hear exactly what you want to say to each one of us in your own in our own individual lives, Lord. And I ask this in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. This morning, we are going to actually be reading in the book of Matthew. And it's a part of the Christmas story that often gets left out. But it's visits for the visitors from the east in Matthew chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? He saw his, we saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. Okay, does everybody hear my dog? I might need to let her out this morning. Can you hold on for a minute? Maybe, maybe I'm going to go, well, oh, maybe she'll stop. If you can hear me okay, would somebody just give me a thumbs up because I want to make sure that you're hearing what I'm saying and not my dog barking in the background. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead then. I will go ahead and continue reading. Um, let's see. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, and as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of all the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Go ahead and let my dog out, Sarah. <laughs> I'm going to let her out. Hold on. Sorry about that, folks. Um, anyway, hopefully she'll be quiet now, right? Okay, I'm going to start over with reading this scripture again. So sorry for the interruption this morning, but even as we meet together, we sometimes have interruptions, right? All right, reading from Matthew chapter 2. 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod about the time some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of all the leading priests and teachers of the religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star that had led them in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and they gave him gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. During this Advent season, we have focused on the Christmas story each week, and we have seen how God is working to bring his kingdom reign using ordinary people, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, all to carry this good news. Our time, I think for me, and I hope for you, has been rich. The devotional we have been using has been inspiring. I was sharing with my son on Christmas Day that I am going to keep this devotional close at hand and hopefully I will be um, reminded by the Holy Spirit to pick it up throughout the year and just read pieces out of it because I, I just feel like I have been so touched and so moved um, using this devotional and I certainly hope that you have too. Um, it's led me into a deeper place of worship. It's drawn me closer to the Lord, and I have gained a greater understanding of my part to play in, re in um, the earth around me, in the people around me receiving her king, and I hope that you have too. As I was preparing for today's message, one commentator stated, on the same night that the angels appeared to the shepherds, a star appeared to the magi. Now, I don't know if that's actually when the star appeared, but we know that it was some 800 miles from where the Lord was born that God was breaking in. He was leading and he was guiding. Our focus this morning is on the men, the wise men who came from the east to see this newborn king of the Jews and to worship him. We don't know much about these men. Many of us are familiar with a Christmas hymn written by John Henry Hopkins in 1857 called We Three Kings of Orient. It begins, we three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we travis afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. So this is where we hear the, stor the star and where we come up with the idea that there were three kings and often in our um, our nativity scenes, we have three kings pictured, and I brought my three kings with me this morning from my nativity scene just to share with you. But I want you to notice that on this one, this is a Jim Shore um, nativity scene, is pictured the star. And this is, this is where I really want us to focus this morning as on the star. It was amazing to me this past week, um, on Monday actually, um, we, we were going to have an opportunity to see a phenomenon, and that was where Juniper, uh, Juniper yeah, <laughs> and Saturn would line up together. They would come so close together. Um, they would come so close together for the first time in 800 years from our line of sight. They would actually appear as one, and often that's that uh, people say that's actually what the Bethlehem star or the Christmas star was, where the planets were coming close together, and so they were shining brightly as one. 
this this phenomenon was all over the news and it was an opportunity to see the Christmas star so brightly shining I was so excited about it that I texted all of my kids and I said we've got to do this we've got to look and listen you have to look at sunset and know this sunset is coming early Monday night and that is because um, Monday night was the beginning of the um, winter solace and it was the darkest day of 2020 I found that interesting also that this was going to take place on the darkest day of 2020 our scripture this morning is from Matthew as I read but in Matthew 4 16 we read the people living in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the shadow of death a light has dawned Jesus himself said in John 8 12 I am the light of the world whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life he is our light we don't know, um, and actually on Monday night it was cloudy and we couldn't see that here, but there are pictures out there on the internet of people who did were, who were able to see it, and that's exciting. But we don't know much about these wise men. And while our nativity sing and our songs depict three, um, we know from early writings that there were many more than three. They came from the east. They're called magi or wise men. They were most likely astrologers and astronomers. They studied the stars and they would know and ponder when they saw a change in the celestial cap. Ancient cultures believed that God communicated through the movement of the stars. They would interpret this and kings would pay attention to what the Magi said. So when they arrived in Jerusalem and they asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? And proclaimed, we saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. Of course, King Herod paid attention too. He was not a good king. And this news to him would have come, um, that, that they had come to worship the newborn king would have disturbed him. As, as scripture says, it greatly disturbed him. So he called a meeting of all the leading priests and teachers of the law and asked them, where is this Messiah to be born? God had promised his people a new king who would save them from their enemies. The leaders shared out of the word of God what the prophet wrote in Micah 5.2. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are not least among the rulers of the cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. This made Herod very anxious. Herod was not a full Jew. He was not a descendant of King David, and he didn't have any birthright to the kingship. But this child, this one who was going to be born, or who had been born, he was the king of kings and lords of lords, and he did have the birthright for kingship. So Herod said to these wise men that they should go and find him and then come back and report to him. But as we have learned in chapter 2, his plan wasn't to worship them, but they, being wise men, listened to God in a dream and went a different way home. But before going home, this is what we want to focus on this morning. After this interview, we read that the Magi went on their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them, guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and it stopped over the place where the child was. And I love this. The star they had seen guided them. It went ahead of them. It could be that for 2,000 plus years ago, when the kings of king and lord of lords was born, that this aligning of the planet of Jupiter and Saturn so formed an angle that from Earth it was bright, just like the one that many saw this last week. But we know that this star 2,000 years ago, it was leading and guiding wise men to find the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They received a sign from heaven and they were filled with joy. The star had stopped at the place where the child and his mother were. This is what I want you to hear this morning. Arriving in Jerusalem, they heard a word from scripture, prophecy from Micah. They believed what was written and then they headed to Bethlehem. They were guided and led by the star itself to the exact place where the king was, where this newborn king was. They heard, they believed, and they had it out. God was guiding these men to the place where they could meet the true light. 
He was leading them in unconventional ways. God is continuing to move. He is continually moving. He is working through situations and circumstances to lead people to a place where they find him. Even in this year, 2020, we have looked, we have watched and observed and participated in ways that God has been moving. I know some of us, as we gathered together on Christmas Eve, um, before we began the service, we took some time to share just some praises of where we have seen God moving um, just during this Advent season, and it was or, or this past year as well. And it was amazing to listen to the stories of how God has been moving. And this is what I want you to hear: that God is working through situations. He's working through circumstances. He's leading people to a place where they can find Him, just like He led those wise men with a star. He goes ahead of us, and He is leading us, and He wants to be found. God is working in the world. He is guiding and he is leading. The Magi sought the child until they found him. Bible scholars agree that these men could have traveled upwards of 800 miles, a journey that would have taken several months, but most likely two years. God himself said, as recorded in Jeremiah 29, 13, if you look for me, you will find me. Deuteronomy 4, 29, speaking to the people who had not kept covenant with him, um, he said, if you search the Lord with all of your heart and soul, you will find him. And Isaiah 55, 6 tells us to seek the Lord while he can be found and call on him while he is near. And then in Matthew 6, we're told to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. As we close out 2020 and look forward to 2021, we should all be asking ourselves, are we seeking him? Okay. Back to our scripture. The wise men had been on a journey. They had heard a word from the scripture. They had believed and they were guided to the exact place where the child and his mother Mary are. And listen to this. They bowed down. They opened their treasure chests and they presented him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. In preached messages, the significance of these gifts is often given much attention. But today I want to focus not on the gold and the incense and the myrrh, but on their posture. When they found the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, they bowed down. Think about this for a minute. I mentioned earlier that many kings sought out wise men for direction, and they listened to what they had to say. But these wise men humbled themselves by kneeling and bowing down before the Lord, bowing down in a way that demonstrates humility and devotion. They were in the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and they postured themselves before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in humility and submission, and they worshipped him. Worship is an act that brings glory to God. Then, then they opened up their treasures and they laid them at the feet of the King to be used for his purposes. I think this portion of the Christmas story often gets overlooked and left out. But I've been thinking about it all week. Actually, throughout this whole Advent season, as we've journeyed through our devotional, Let Earth Receive His King, I've been renewing my passion for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and I hope you have been too. And this has caused my heart to posture itself in a bowed down fashion towards God. Oftentimes, as I was reading through the devotional, the Holy Spirit would just tug on my heart, and I'd have to close my eyes and, and just come before him and ask him to fill me with a new passion and a, and a new drive and a new desire. And, and throughout this whole season, this has been what's been going on in my heart, and I hope it's been going on in yours also. Throughout the Advent journey, we have waited and we have anticipated, and now we celebrate. We celebrate what we have received. When we gather together each week for worship, um, it's a time when we, we come to do just that, to, to celebrate what God has done for us. We celebrate together each Sunday, whether it's in person or virtually, the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he sent his son, that whoever believes in him, that whoever follows him, that whoever journeys after him, shall not perish, but have ever lasting life. Emmanuel, God with us, the light of the world coming to guide us and to lead us and to show us the way. That's what 
we gather together to celebrate, when we gather in worship of him, once we find him, we too should be drawn to a position of bowing down in humility and submission and worshiping him. Each week as we hear his word proclaimed and believe it, it should be molding us, informing us, and moving us to a place where we bow down in submission to him and offer him whatever we have in our treasure chest. Hear this. God uses unconventional ways to get us to move towards him. We are to follow God's leading and seek after him until we find him. And when we find him, our response should be to bow down and worship him and offer him whatever we have in our treasure chest. Our scripture tells us these wise men were filled with joy. They bowed down and worshipped him and opened their chest and gave him their gifts. This is the part of the Christmas story that we love, isn't it? the gift giving. And for us, some of us, it's also the gift getting. I had Christmas yesterday with my grandgirls, and I had purchased each of them something that they had circled in the toy catalog. I was so excited for them to receive this gift. I was so excited to see the joy on the faces as we received it. This girl opened their gift. I love to give gifts. Thinking about this, I treasured it in my own heart how God feels as he offers us his greatest gift, his son, and how he continues to give through his word and his grace and the leading of his Holy Spirit. Well, as the girls open their gifts with a great mind, can I just say, your parents are doing a great job, and my grand boys too. At every gift my grandchildren opened, they came, each one of them came, as they opened their gift and thanked me for the gift that I had given them. And then they gave me a hug. Um, as I watched them do that, and as I thought about that, as I've, I've reflected back on this, I thought, I wonder, do I come to the Lord, and do I thank Him continually for all the gifts that He gives me? I think that that's something that we should be thinking about. God gives us so many gifts, and the little things, He gives us so many gifts. And we, we should be coming to Him and, and thanking Him for all of the gifts that He gives he made me conscious of something that, that that's something that I should personally be doing and watching out for. But can I also share that the girls, while they were so excited about the gifts that they had received, within an hour, they left the special gifts, and they lined up the boxes that carried the gifts into their house. They were sitting in the plain old cardboard boxes. They'd made a turn out of them, and each of the parents looked at them, and uh, Pastor Dana took a picture of them, and we made the comment, as so we needed to do, we could have just gotten a box. But as I was reflecting on this last night, I pondered that perhaps this is somehow how I respond to all the Lord has done for me. And I ask God to help me in this year, 2021, to remember the excitement I had when I first met him. Oh, I remember when I was just a young mom, and I met the Lord as my Savior. And, and he had been working through so many people in my life, drawing me to him. He had put stars in my life, people in my life, that were drawing me to him. And, and so many times I would get off track, or, or I would push them away. But then there was this point in my life when I, when I was drawn to him, I was drawn to his presence, and I said, yes, I want to follow you. Yes, I believe in you. Yes, I want to be your child. I want to guide me. And I was so excited. I was just sharing with recently that when I was a brand new Christian, I would go around constantly, and, and people would, something would happen, or people would say something, and I would say, well, praise the Lord. And I meant that. I, I praise God for everything. But I think as you journey with the Lord, don't want that to happen any longer. I want to continue excited about being in the presence of the Lord. I want to look for Him in the ordinary, in the uncommon of my everyday life. I want to seek Him each day with all of my heart. I want to submit to relinquish control and to posture myself in such a way that I am fully. Continually. 
2021 to be a year where I seek Him in every experience, worship Him, and always be willing to open my treasure and present Him with gifts that He can use for His glory and His honor and His praise. And I want others to receive the greatest gift, the gift of Jesus. This is my heart's desire for 2021. What is your heart's desire for 2021? Father, I pray that as we have come and acknowledged the blessings that you have poured out upon us, the gifts that you have given us, that we would, in this new year coming upon us, seek after you with all of our hearts, that we would seek you until we find you, just like those wise men Found you, that we would recognize the stars that you put in our life to lead us and to guide us, whether that be a devotional book or a piece from a message or a word spoken from someone, Lord, or just something that we see out in the ordinary every day, Lord. May we, may we pay attention. May we be aware. May we be led by your spirit, Lord. And as we're led by your spirit, Lord, may we say yes to your will and to your way. May our hearts be bowed down in worship towards you in praise for all that you have given us. May we recognize every place that you're working, Lord. And may we also be your lights, Lord. May we be used of you. May we offer every gift that we have, Lord, whether that's our finances or whether that's our, our time. Lord, or or whatever it might be, Lord, whatever gift we have, may we open our treasure chest and may we lay them, our treasures at your feet, Lord, to be used for your purposes. We think, Lord, as the wise men opened those gifts and laid them, the gold, the incense, and the myrrh, Lord, they were used for your purposes, Lord, as um, Joseph and Mary and Jesus fled to Egypt, and they provided for them, Lord. But, but we also know, Lord, that you have given each of us gifts, and you've given us talents, and you've given us resources, Lord. And may we be willing to give those back to you, to be used however you see fit in 2021, Lord, that we might be able to carry your light into the world, that others, Lord, might see you and know you and, and worship you, Lord, and give their lives to you and find the hope and the joy, and the peace, and the love, Lord, that you offer the world. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may you go, guided by the presence of the Spirit, into the awareness of His holy presence all around you. Go in peace. Love you guys. Bye-bye.